This is my wife's long arm sewing machine and one of the things you do with it is a lot of times you'll sew in a straight line. So you may want to sew straight across like this or you may want to sew in a straight line like this. So in order to do that, they make channel locks and they make different ones. One, you can just put it on the wheels to lock the wheels and you manually put them on there. But, you know, if you're doing, say, say you're doing a line and then you want to move an inch and do another line and you want to move an inch and do another line, that can get to be tedious to do that. I wanted to make her an electric lock that would go on there. And they sell electric locks. They make ones that clamps and some that are magnetic and different types, but they're all very expensive, like, you know, 800 to a thousand dollars or something like that for something that's really relatively um, pretty easy to make or design. So just wanted to show you what I've done today in case somebody wants to make one or you may just be interested in the design process. So up there on the top is the switches. And so it's set up, it's got a little flashing light up here on the top to show you that it's on so that you don't go off and leave it on for hours and hours. But um, when you flip it, you can hear it lock. And that's the direction of sewing. So now you're good to sew in this direction, but you can't go this way. And then if you want to sew in this direction, you flip that switch and now you can sew this way, but your machine's not gonna go forward or backward. And I've got a, a wiring diagram that I'll post in the description so that you, uh, I'll, I'll post a link to it in the description so you'll be able to find it in case you're wanting to make one of these. But let me show you how the locks actually work because this is really a super simple thing. It's just a 12 volt transformer coming to these um, switches and then it goes from these just to a magnetic lock. So let me show you the first one is down here on the side, right there. All this is is just a piece of steel that I bolted to the plate. This used to have a manual lock, so I bolted it to this angle plate. But then it comes out and then it's just got a piece of sheet metal. And at the end, I'll talk about the design process for this sheet, for this sheet metal and this whole hinge system. But uh, So it just holds this magnet just maybe a 32nd of an inch from this steel bar that I put on there. And let me flip it on for you. And you'll see, can you see that little bit of movement? No, I don't know that you can actually see that. I'll show you on the other one. It's, it's a little more apparent on the other one. So that's the side piece. Now let me show you the back. All right, so here's the back of the machine, and this is actually the cable that goes to the lock in the back. You need some type of a flexible system there because the machine moves, as you can see, quite a, quite a bit back and forth. On the other side, it's got a, a system that manages the power cord, but there wasn't any room in it to add this, so I just added this little piece of flexible pipe here. And let me get you down let me get you down to where you can see up underneath here and see the lock. Okay, so this is the magnet on the back side. And you can see that it moves just on that piece of sheet metal. It kind of acts as the hinge. Let me engage it for you. And you can see how the magnet jumps forward and grabs it. And that was the hardest part of the design process for this was finding something that would act as a spring and yet also hold it rigid once that it's clamped in place. The beam for this is about 14 feet long. So it, and as you go up and down, the, the magnet moves anywhere from about an eighth of an inch to almost zero distance from that beam. I needed something that would allow for the variation in that beam and still allow the magnet to be able to get sucked into the side there. So let me explain just a little bit about the design process on this. So this is part of part of uh, my first step. My first step was actually I just made this L bracket out of eighth inch steel and I put the magnet right here and when I mounted it to it, of course, this didn't have enough flex at all to make it uh, contact the metal and stop the, uh, the sewing machine. So I thought, well, I just need this to be able to flex. So I put a hinge in it and that kind of worked. It would, you know, it would then move and contact it but the problem was it also rode against the edge and made a grinding noise because this being heavier, it wanted to turn in and, and ride against the rail, which was running right here. So 
I thought, okay, well then I'm going to have to put a little spring back here to pull it back a little bit and then a little stop to keep it from being pulled back too far. And, and the other part of this was it has, a, the hinge has a little bit of wiggle in it. And so when you put it on that sewing machine and you extend that way, you know, you got this little bit of wiggle in the back and then you extend that out three feet to the front of the machine it's actually moving you know an inch or more it was at the point where i was trying to figure out how to put a spring on here and a stop and all that that i've kind of learned over the years that if you start getting to the place where things are just getting really complicated that you probably just need to stop and rethink how could you do this different because you're probably over complicating it and i was over complicating it so my next step was i thought well what about some spring steel i don't really have any large spring steel but i do have some sheet metal and i thought well it's flexible in this dimension, right? But then if you get it this way, it's not flexible going this way, you know, because it's so wide. So I thought, well, you know, that might work. So what I wound up doing was, I took another piece of, piece of steel and I just welded this on the end and then put, me, put my magnet down on there and this had just enough flex that it would bend and let that magnet stick on there. And this was the ticket. This is what really, really made it work. I then have a little terminal block that I put on the back side of the sewing machine and that just allows me to connect the 12 volts in, the switches and the magnets all into one little central location right here. And it works out um, pretty good. All right, well, that's all I've got on this project. I hope this was interesting to you. I was really pleased with the way it comes out. It works really well. It's very simple. It's just 12 volts with a switch that goes down to these magnets. It's got this little flashing LED to help you remember that you've left it on. Other than that, um, it's just switches and a little transformer and some magnets. And it cost me, oh, less than $50 easy and saved me, you know, $800 to $1,000, depending on which, there's a lot of different systems out there, but uh, depending on which one you got, they're all extremely expensive. It's amazing to me, everything for these quilting systems is amazingly expensive. Anyway, I hope this was interesting to you. Thank you for watching.